Fashion Tech Alliance involves higher educational institutions, small, medium and big enterprises and the research center. This project has been co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union and is aimed to facilitate knowledge exchange between partners and to design and pilot learning experiences to engage students in a fashion tech residency program, embedding young talents in the company's innovation activities. A central objective of the project is to design multidisciplinary and intersectoral learning activities involving international students from five European universities. The contents of the lectures have been specifically created to match the needs of fashion tech learning. They have become open educational resources to allow future engagement between a European-wide fashion and textile HEI community and are available under Creative Commons Sharealike 4.0 with the aim of a wide and free distribution, access, use and reuse. Ready to learn more about fashion tech? Enjoy the lecture! Hi, I am Rimini Aditria, PhD candidate at the Zen Department of Politecnico di Milano. Here, I'm working on my research that concerns sustainability issues in an environmental, social, cultural and economic context where design can be a vector for a positive change. Today's lesson, we will discover the importance of the material dimension in fashion. We will understand material sustainability defining what a sustainable material is and categorizing the different typology of sustainable material. I will also present some best practices that have distinguished themselves for the positive and innovative impact of their work. Fashion is an hybrid industry that merges together in material values such as creativity, aesthetic, culture, with material components as fiber, leather, yarns, fabric, plastic. In fashion, creativity and cultural content can only be expressed through the quality of materials, which are the medium through which immaterial values are expressed. This is the reason why the fashion sector is so focused in investing in this specific aspect of the supply chain. Because of this deep relation between material and immaterial dimension, fashion is demanding when it comes to materials, and symbolic aesthetic parameters become fundamental in guiding the choice of a particular fabric. A change, even a small one, because of a sustainable process, can have a major impact on the choice of that fabric. I am thinking about the greater or lesser softness, stability, color intensity, and even fabric hand. On the other hand, it is also true that fashion is characterized by its experimental vocation and it is therefore open to the use of new materials or to the recontextualization of products from third industries. In this context, however, it should be remembered that experimenting with materials in order to move from catwalks to high volume production will require time and the right combination of factors, such as research, technologies, systems, but also languages and cultures. These values, however, will be influenced by factors such as cultural background, trends and emotions. This is the reason why it's so complex working with new materials. You need to address both the tangible and intangible dimension of fashion. A perfect example of material experimentation is the case of BioCouture. This is a project developed by Sudan Lee more than 20 years ago. She works with microbes as a factory of the future. The recipe that she has been and is still today exploring is to grow a piece of clothing using a symbiotic mix of yeast and bacteria. This is a fermentation that grows your bacterial cellulose. It's kind of like a vegetable letter. And from the slideshow, you can see the different results she obtained during the years. And now let's understand what material sustainability is. 
we will define what are sustainable materials and I will provide you some example of tools that today designer can use to navigate among the different material and their sustainability. So what does sustainable material mean for fashion today? The definitions of sustainable material are several provided by both professional and scholars. And uh, the one that I propose to you today is the result of the combination of several aspects that I've met during these years of research. So sustainable materials are materials used throughout the industry, industrial and consumer economies that can be produced in the required volumes without depleting non-renewable resources and without disrupting the achieved static balance of the overall ecosystem and key resource systems. Once we define what a sustainable material is, the next step is to understand how to recognize a sustainable material today. There are tools which can be used by designers to navigate among the many options available on the market. The two most immediate tools to be used by designers are certification and catalogs. Certification are documents that prove that a given product, process or service is confirmed to specify the requirement. This can be environmental aspect, animal rights, organic production and social aspect. Catalogs are documents which illustrate the latest trend in the fiber and materials market and support designer in choosing one material instead of another. Certification are the first and most immediate tool that can be used by designers for understanding material sustainability. They identify sustainable issues or the absence or solution of such issues. Today, certification mainly concerns three aspects, the product life cycle assessment, the product environmental impact, and the product social impact. In this slide are reported the eight most important certifications which are now available in Europe. The Cradle to Cradle certification, which is awarded to products that are made for the circular economy. The REACH certification, which is awarded for products that are compliant with the EU REACH regulation about chemicals. The EU Ecolabel, which is awarded to products that have excellent environmental performances, the OECO Tax Standard 100, which is awarded to textiles which are tested for harmful substances, the Global Recycle Standard, which is awarded to products which are made from recycled resources, the GOTS Global Organic Textile Standard, which is awarded to products that are made from organic sources, the World Fair Trade Organization, which is awarded to products which are made in decent working condition and when there is a fairer deal for farmers and workers in developing countries, and the B Corp certification, which is awarded to companies that have a holistic and systemic approach to sustainability, considering territories and people in their in action. Catalogs are an extremely useful tool that can be used by designers for understanding material sustainability. Catalogs support designers in navigating the complexity of all the sustainable material available today on the market in terms of innovation processes, ecosystemic impact and supply chain availability. Four are the main catalogs that can be used today. The MedBuy Fiber Environmental Benchmark the HIG Material Sustainability Index, the 2020 Preferred Fiber and Materials by Textile Exchange, the CFDA, the Council of Fashion Design of America Materials Index. The Met by Environmental Benchmark for Fibers compares the environmental impact of the most commonly used fibers in the clothing industry. The fibers are classified on six common parameters, greenhouse gas emissions, human toxicity, ecotoxicity, energy, water, and soil. The Textile Exchange New Preferred Fiber and Materials Market Report by Textile Exchange 
shows the latest trend in the fiber and materials market. It includes those with a better social and environmental impact, which are known as preferred. The HIG Material Sustainability Index is a tool to measure material sustainability from the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. It is best used as a LCA tool, not a general guide. The beauty of this ranking system is a measurement tool. Use it to calculate sustainability for your specific supply chain and compare it to the rest of the industry. The CFDA Materials Index is an online free repository where you can find a list of all the mater sustainable materials that today you can find on the market. For each of the material lists, you can find also the characteristic, the main feature, and the link to the main article about these materials. In this next section, we will categorize the different sustainable materials, and I will provide you some of the best practices that today are distinguished themselves for their innovative practices and sustainable impact on the industry. Let's now categorize the different typology of sustainable materials. When we talk about sustainable materials, in general, we talk of materials designed or produced for circularity. That's because these materials, these new materials, are purpose driven. This means that the final aim is to preserve resources and be able to keep the material inside the production of the consumption loop as long as possible as its maximum quality. These kind of materials are categorized in biobased materials, recycled materials, and regenerated materials. But what a biobased material is? Biobased means a product that is made from biomass, such as plants, trees, or animals. The biomass can have undergone physical, chemical, or biological treatment. Perfect example of biobased material is our best practice Milo. Milo is a um, product of bold trees in partnership with Ecovative, and this is a leather-like material made from mycelium, the underground root structure of uh, mushrooms. Mycelium grows uh, as tiny threads that form vast networks under the forest floor. To produce Milo, optimal growing conditions are created for mycelium cell to self-assemble into a supple. At the end, we obtain a sustainable material that looks and feels exactly like animal leather. But how it works? The process begins with the mycelium cells. The cells are grown in beds of uh, cornstalks with uh, additional nutrients to feed and grow uh, the mycelium. Growth conditions like temperature and humidity are precisely controlled to encourage the mycelium to grow upward and self-assemble into an organized mat of interconnected cells. Billions of cells grow and form an interconnected 3D network, and uh, this connection gives the material strength. Then the material is compressed to make a 2D material as thin or thick as the desired final material. And at this point, the mycelium is no longer growing. It goes through a natural tanning process and uh, also it can be dyed. The final step is to imprint any desired partner. And at the end, uh, you obtain uh, any kind of partner, any kind of the result the designer has imagined. Uh, the most important um, collaboration by now for Milo is the one with uh, Stella McCartney who was one of the first to believe in this uh, company. And uh, today there is a partnership among Caring Adidas to uh, support the company in their scaling process and uh, in, uh, adopt this new material as a raw material for uh, their leather production. And what does recycled materials mean? Recycling means converting waste into a new material or a new object of the same value. Recycling a product means destroying it and then giving it a new life. The only drawback of this method is the large amount of energy required. This process is a very important factor in the conversion of natural resources 
and makes a huge contribution to improving the environment. Case study of the recycled material category is Warn Again. Warn Again is a best practice, a British company that have developed a unique technology which has the ability to replace the use of virgin resources by recapturating raw materials from non-reusable products. The technology is a recycling process which is able to separate, decontaminate and extract polyester and cellulose from non-reusable textile, polyester bottles and plastic packaging to produce a dual output of pet pallets and uh, cellulose pulp. The company is now focused on uh, solving the challenging issue of converting polyester and polycotton blended textile as well as pet plastic at the end of their uh, use and uh, turning them back into circular raw materials. The final aim of uh, Warn Again is keeping the world's resources in constant circulation so they, they can drive economic, social and environmental benefit, enabling circularity and contributing to eliminating textile and plastic waste. And last but not least, what does regenerated materials mean? The remanufacturing process involves the reuse of waste and scrap without destroying them. This will create a product at higher value. Regeneration is a type of recycling that allows the new product to be worth more than it was before. Regenerating a product allows it to have a new life, a new form, and above all, a new purpose. To put this action into practice, you need to change your mindset, to understand that from waste you can create beauty and you can create value. The best practice for the regenerated material category is Refo. Refo is an emerging brand of clothes and accessories. They produce high quality products made from 100% regenerated textile fibers and produced in Italy. Refo adopted a mechanical and artisanal process developed in the textile district of Prato, their city, more than 100 years ago. The process is really simple. The leftover of wool or cotton are collected and selected by color. Then these leftovers are shredded into new fibers. These fibers are spun into a brand new yard and the yarn is used to make a 100% regenerated cloth. This method allow them to recycle leftovers and significantly reduce the amount of water chemicals and energy used in production. As you can see in the infographic, they use the 90% less of water, 90% less of chemicals, 100% less of dyers, 95% less of CO2 and exploit the 77% less of energy. This result set them on a mission. Their mission is to create a fashionable and high quality clothing line entirely made in Prato with 100% regenerated fibers. In this lesson, we have just discovered what a sustainable material is, and we have understood the complexity of researching, developing, producing, and working with sustainable materials. Now, I will leave you with two final considerations. First, the topic of innovative sustainable materials is a fundamental resource for enabling sustainable design as well as emerging new business models. This kind of material can support the positive transition toward a sustainable industrial paradigm and can open new way for a new innovative and positive designer work. Second, the ongoing research and development activities are making it possible to make progress in the sustainable materials area and are showing now viable and cost-effective sustainable alternatives. The best practices that I've just showed to you are the proof that if you invest time and money and you keep on researching on this topic, a future alternative is possible, is something that is money effective and can be a very important step in the industry transformation toward a sustainable paradigm.